you can't get out. When you can't get out. When you can't get
feast the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourself to dwell in your panel houses and this temple to lie in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have so much and bring in love. You eat, but do not have enough. Mm. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. Mm. And he who earns wages, earns wages, wages put into a bad coat. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, but indeed it came to look. And when you, uh, when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you, you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you behold the dew, and the earth beholds its fruit. For I call for a drought on the land, and the mountains, on the grain, and the new wine, and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Sheathiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest, with all the women of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord, their God. And the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the presence of the Lord. Then Haggai the Lord's messenger spoke the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of the Rubabel, the son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. You may be seated Amen. in the presence of the Lord. This morning, this morning, this morning, this morning, our chosen topic, reboot to reset your priorities. Amen. Reboot to reset your priorities. Now sometimes, when our computer is not operating effectively, or our smartphone is not acting so smart, the best thing to do is to reboot. Rebooting allows the phone or the computer to restart and get back to working normally again. Amen? Well. Now don't the word reboot most times it's used in a computer term. But many times, saints, our lives and our ministries can be in need of a reboot. Maybe your life, maybe your marriage, maybe your career, maybe your family is all messed up and not working right and is in need of a reboot. Everyone but the who have hit to the door sometimes need to reboot from time to time. Well, but what I've discovered, saints, is that most people don't know how to reboot. See, on our computers, in order to reboot, we just turn it off and turn it back on. But if you like Oscar, Helps. you call on your spouse. Well, yeah, amen. Amen. So, Mm -hmm. Let me share an old story with you about some church people that was in need of a reboot. It's about four people in the church, and their names were everybody, somebody, anybody, well. and nobody. And the church has some financial responsibility, 
and everybody was asked to help. <clears throat> everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Mm -hmm. Anybody could have done it. But you know who did it? Nobody. Nobody. Mm -hmm. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody, mm -hmm. but nobody did what anybody could have done. Well. Then the church grounds needed some work. Mm -hmm. And somebody was asked to help. But somebody got mad because anybody could have done it. And after all, it was really everybody's job. Well. And then the work was given to nobody, and nobody did a very fine job. Mm. Amen. Amen. And on and on it went. Nobody gave his time, nobody shared his faith. In short, nobody was a very faithful member doing nothing. Mm. Finally, the day came. When somebody left the church and took anybody and everybody with them, mm. guess who was there? Nobody. Nobody. This is truly mm. a sad story. Mm. But it happens when we have misplaced priorities. Amen? Amen. And so today's text in Haggai tells us about our priorities. As I said, believers today face the same issue that Haggai faced during this time period. Because the believers then had convinced themselves that it was not the right time to complete working on God's house. You see, they put off working for God's house to focus on their own personal houses, amen? Yeah, yeah. For a little background information, you see, the Israelites or the Jews returning from Babylonian captivity, came back to rebuild Jerusalem and God's temple. But somewhere along the way of rebuilding, their priorities shifted. Whether from personal uh, uh, persecution for the people around them or criticism by people being too busy, amen, they end up putting God's house on the back burner. And they focus on their own personal wants first. You see, they have forgotten to, to uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to them, according to Matthew 6, 33. Now, although these returning Jews started well and they had a clear vision and they had a commitment they got off course. And so they were in need of a reboot to reset their priorities. Amen? Amen. You see, as a result of them getting off course as, as to their priorities, everything that was designed by God to bring them joy, peace, and fulfillment ended up bringing them frustration and dissatisfaction. The temple of God was designed to be a sign of God's blessing on Israel. And at one point, it was considered one of the ancient seven wonders of the world. The temple again represented God dwelling among the nation of Israel. And it testified of God's presence, his existence, his supremacy, his holiness, mercy, and authority. It was a marvelous sight to see the temple in those days. But in 586 BC, the temple was destroyed and Judah was taken into captivity. But in 538 BC, Cyrus, ruler of the Medo Persian Empire, defeated the Babylonians and took charge. And he allowed the conquered nations, including the Jews, to return to their homeland. He even decided to, to finance the construction, reconstruction rather, of the temple. In 536 BC, about 50,000 returned to the land. But many of these Jews that were in captivity, they had felt comfortable in Babylon, but they had prospered. And so they were not interested in returning to Jerusalem, amen. Mm -hmm. And so the way of, their way of life was more important to them 
than reinstituting the public worship of God. Yet, these faithful Jews made the journey back to Jerusalem, and they began the task of rebuilding the temple. They laid the foundations in 536 BC, but they encountered opposition, and so they put their work on hold. They started to focus on building up their own houses and neglected the house of the Lord. In fact, the rebuilding of the temple was on hold for 16 years. And that's why God sent his word by the prophet Haggai. Mm -hmm. And he told them that they had put their selfish desires before him, which was they was committing idolatry. Amen. My, my. So many people today have their priorities upside down. And they don't see any danger of putting themselves first. Mm -hmm. Their focus is not on God well, and the things of God, but it's all about me, myself, and I. Yeah. They want their will to be done. They want their wants to be satisfied. And the result is that many in the kingdom of God today are in danger of having God's blessings removed. But what exactly happens to us when our priorities with God get turned upside down or misplaced. Well, I see three things in our text that happen to the people of Israel. First, when God is not our top priority people, we become deceived. The Jews deceive themselves in thinking that building a house of the Lord can come later on their own time schedule. That's what we read in verses 1 through 4. And some of their excuses might have included something like this. Well, mm -hmm. God, we can't afford to build a house for you. Or we can't put our money into this kingdom because our house is taking up all our money. Mm -hmm. They might say, well, God, timing is just not right. Mm -hmm. I'll catch you later. Amen. Well. And then they might say, when I have more money, Lord, then I would give it to the house of the Lord. Because right now, I got to take care of me, my family, and myself. Amen. Amen. Saints, don't get me wrong. There's nothing inherently wrong with prioritizing the building or the rebuilding of our homes or even being devoted to our work. However, they become misplaced priorities when they displace more important priorities and then we are in need of a reboot to reset. Well. Now there's a bit of a clue in our text as to the nature of the Jews' misplaced priorities. You see, God did not take issue with the fact that they needed to put a roof over their head, amen? However, howsoever, God's displeasure was in reference to the fact that the home they were building was power housing. Check, 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 uh, verse 4 out, amen? The inference here is that they were busy building some beautiful, upscale homes. And so the misplaced for our in the mind of God had to do with the love of people for large and spacious homes at the expense or total neglect of rebuilding of the temple. Or they were delaying the rebuilding of the temple because they could not afford to rebuild the temple of God and their own designer homes at the same time. Amen? Amen. Again, amen. God don't mind us having nice things. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he wants us to put him first. Amen? amen. Amen. Because if we are not careful, those nice things will steal our hearts yeah. and our time. Amen? Amen. amen. So when people say something like this in verse 2, God, this isn't a good time to begin, to begin rebuilding your house because we are too busy and financial strap just building our dream homes. <laughs> God reacted and he said, well, it's time for you yourselves to be living in your pound home while this house 
is in ruins. Amen. Amen. So having no time, no money for God's house, while one has plenty of time and money for other things, is misplaced priority. Amen. Amen. Having no time for one's family, when one has plenty of time to work from sun up to sun down, is a misplaced priority. Amen. Having no time to use your time, to use your talents in the house of the Lord, when you have plenty of time to serve on committees for your sororities and your fraternities, is misplaced priorities. Having no time to attend Bible study, whereas you have plenty of time to watch all the sports on TV. Well. Amen. You don't have time, amen, to serve God, but you have time to work a part-time job, amen? amen. All those things are misplaced priorities. Now, every one of us has chosen to put certain things mm -hmm. at the top of our personal to-do list. And these things get our time, get our money, gets our resources, and really, it gets our hearts. We can glean things if we just audit our days for just a couple of weeks or less, and we can identify what gets most of our time and our resources. Matthew 6, 21 in the Amplified says, For where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that are with your life centers, will be also. And Jesus said in Luke 12, 15, reading from the Good News Translation, he said, watch out and guard yourselves from every kind of greed because your true life is not made up of things you own, no matter how rich you may be, amen? So again, when God is the first in our lives, we are guaranteed to mess up our lives. So ask yourself, what's important to you? Ask yourself, what occupies most of your time and your money? Who and what are you neglecting? Who and what needs to be prioritized in your life? The truth is, saints, time will never be right when our priorities uh, our Lord. Amen. Well, amen. And so we find in our text that the Jews or the Israelites, they were caught up in the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. They were caught up in the pursuit of their own happiness. Their mindset rationalized God out of the picture. Now I want to remind you again that these people that were speaking, that Hagar was speaking to, were the ones who were once was faithful enough to leave their home in Babylon and return to rebuild the temple. These people were at one point committed to honoring God and placing Him first in their lives. They chose to follow the call of God to return and reveal. But something happened. Deception crept in and stopped their mission and therefore they were in need of a reboot to reset their priorities. Don't let this happen to you. So check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen. 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 The second thing we find in our text is that when God is not our top priority, we become lost. We become lost. Do you know that sheep get lost one nibble at a time. Mm -hmm. They get lost by nibbling away at the grass and never looking up to see where they are one or two. And the same can be said of us. When we focus so much on what is immediately before us that we fail to see life from God's perspective, our 
believe we get lost. Mm -hmm. I believe this is what happened to the Israelites here in our story. Let me give you an illustration about not doing what we're supposed to be doing, even though it's a good thing. There was a, a lighthouse along the bleak coast was tended by a keeper who was given enough oil for one month. And he was told specifically to keep the light burning every night. One day a woman came by, asked this keeper for some oil so that her children could stay warm. Then a mama came by. His, his son needed oil for a lap so that he could read. Still another needs some oil for an engine. The keeper saw each as a worthy request, and he measured out just enough oil to satisfy all. Near the end of the month, the tank in the, gas, in the lighthouse ran dry. That night, the beacon was dark, and three ships crashed on the rocks. More than 100 lives were lost. And when a government official investigated, the man explained what he had done and why. And the, and, and the, and the official told him he was given one task alone. Well. It was just to keep the light burning. Everything else was secondary. There is no defense for your actions. Amen. Amen. So sometimes we think we are doing a good thing. But the word of God says obedience is better well, than sacrifice. Well, it's amen, better amen. to do what God tells us to do. Even though you might think that you are helping somebody out. You know the, 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 the Pharisees and all and so forth, they thought they were doing God a favor when they crucified Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. So God doesn't need that kind of favor. He needs us to be obedient. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Because partial obedience is total disobedience. Amen? Well, this man was partially obedient, mm -hmm. but because of that, he ended up being totally obedient mm -hmm. to doing his job. So make a decision to prioritize your spiritual life today, saints. Stop leaning to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes and your mind on the Lord. Amen. Make God your number one priority. Return to the Lord and the things of the Lord if you strayed away. Do a spiritual reboot to get back on that straight and narrow path. Even though you might have to tour off that straight and narrow path, God says that you can make a new turn in the kingdom. Amen. Let your testimony be that you have gotten lost, but now you are found again. Let your testimony be that you were once blinded by the things of this world, but now you see again that nobody can do you like the Lord and that, that he is the best thing that ever happened to you. Amen. Amen. The last thing that we see in our text is when God is not our top priority, we become selfish people. As mentioned earlier, the Jews had convinced themselves that they needed to pursue their own personal goals first. They used the well-known excuse that God can come later. Um, or better still, they use the excuse, well, God knows my heart. Well. He sure do know your heart. And you don't want to do what you say you want to do, amen? Because the Jews, they wrongly thought that the pursuit of personal happiness and well-being superseded the pursuit of God and his will. And so when our priorities are messed up and we are focused on self, we can miss God's calling. We can miss the direction that God wants to do. We can miss doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Let me share this, this 
place for our joke. It says, surprise to see an empty seat at the World Cup football final stadium. A diehard fan asked a woman sitting nearby whose seat it was. Mm -hmm. And she replied, it was my husband's seat, but he died. And the man said, I'm very sorry to hear that. He said, yeah, I'm really surprised that you still love him. And you even did not give another relative a chance to take the seat that was reserved for him. And the woman said, well, they all insisted on going to my husband's funeral. Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> I, I believe mm -hmm. that this wife needed a reaper mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. set. Her my, my. Mm, mm, mm. So saints, focusing on ourselves result in a self-centered well. lifestyle. Amen. Amen. And remember, mm, God mm, mm. doesn't bless less. Amen. When we rob God, we lose more Amen. than we gain. Amen. Amen. It's like mm, mm, the money blows out the window. And when we steal from God, we set ourselves up for failure. Because we might lose what we already have gained. Amen. 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 And so God speaks through the prophet Haggai. And he tells these Israelites, the Jews, that they would never, ever get ahead as long as they put God on the background burn and focus in on themselves. You see, their selfish ways cause the Lord to take away his blessings, and they suffered. Through the prophet they died, the Lord helped the nation of Israel to reassess their current situation. And they found that their current situation wasn't looking so pretty in God's eyes. Because if you look at verses 5 and 6, we find that no matter what the people did, God was working against them. He said, he said they built something up, but God pulled it down. Mm -hmm. They planted it, but God didn't water it. Mm -hmm. They watered it, but God still wouldn't let it grow. Amen. So, don't, so they couldn't blame the devil. Amen. They're going to try. But it was God that was doing this to them. Amen. Amen. So no matter what it is, you name it, and God was working against these people all because they had turned away from him and their assignment. They turned from God and the things of God. And so doing communicated that, that not only they needed what they needed, amen. That they didn't need God, amen. And what they wanted, they wanted now. They didn't have time to wait on God, amen. So selfishness, not putting God first, causes us to lose the things we have already gained. Greed will cause us to be in need. The so people in Israel time were facing a severe famine. And guess what? It was a result of their own selfish ways. Amen? And we probably experience some things even today because of our own selfish ways. That's right. Because 7 Chronicles 7 14 says, If my people mm -hmm. who are called by my name, mm -hmm. Will humble themselves, turn over the way and pray. He said, Then I forgive their sins. My Lord. Heal their name. Yes. My Lord. Amen. He's telling us we are suffering from things because we have put God on the back Amen. 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 But He gives us hope. Amen. Mm -hmm. The good news is that God will always send us a wake up call. Mm -hmm to get us to examine our situation. Amen. And he told me to preach this wake-up call this morning, amen. Amen. To whoever's listening, amen. God pointed out in our text that because of our misplaced priorities, mm -hmm. that he was withholding some of the blessings. In verses 9 to 11, God said, mm -hmm. you look for much, yeah. but indeed it came to look. And when you brought it home, he said, I blew it away. The devil yeah. blew it away. He mm -hmm. said, I blew it away. Mm -hmm. Why? Says the Lord of hosts. 
He said, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own home. Well, Therefore, the heavens above you will hold the dew, and the earth will hold its fruit. Mm -hmm. For I called for a drought on the land and yeah. the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, and all the labors of your hands. Amen. Amen. God did all this mm. because they put him on the back burner. Amen. We need to check our lives, saints, yeah. to see where we have put God on the back burner. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes our prayers are not getting answered. That's, right. that's why it seems like every time you turn around, something's going yeah. wrong. <laughs> But I'm not prepared to say whenever life gets difficult, though, it's a sign that our priorities are misplaced mm -hmm. and that God is upholding his blessings. But we need to search our hearts, though. Amen. Examine Amen. our hearts. Amen. But God Amen. made no bones about pointing, pointing out that it was because of Israel's priorities were misplaced that he would not bless them. So, therefore, God is saying, don't gamble. We're withholding from him what is his. Because you might be setting yourself up to be removed from his blessings. Mm -hmm. Because scripture declares that God is a jealous God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You know how many people are jealous, right? Well, well. God can be a jealous God mm -hmm. when you don't put him first. I'm going to leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. It is fitting to at least to take in consideration God's word. He said it twice. He said it in verse 5. And he said it in verse 7. He said, consider our ways. Mm -hmm. He said, consider your ways. Take a careful look at what you are doing. Take inventory of your priorities. If there are an area in your life that does not reflect the blessings of God, it's impossible that our priorities are misplaced and God wants to get our attention. Do we need a reboot to reset our priorities? Because until the Jews in Jerusalem move God from the bottom of their list of priorities to the top, amen, they did not enjoy the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. They would live in lack until a simple rearranging of misplaced priorities resulted in the return of God's blessings. Mother Teresa, after winning the Nobel Peace Prize, decided that she would not travel to accept any more recognition because the accolades were beginning to interfere with her work. She knew that she was not in the business of accepting prizes and making speeches. Right. She knew that her calling was to serve the poor people of Calcutta. Amen? Amen. So it's difficult for God to bless the homes of people who prioritize careers over their families. It's difficult for God to bless the life of a person who does not honor God in all and above all. But to these Jews credit, when the people heard that God was not blessing them because of their priorities, they took steps to get their lives back in order. Yeah. When they realized the error of their ways and reordered their priorities, verse 12 says that God began to send down his blessings again. So again, seek the Lord, ask the Lord, what are you putting before him first? Seek the Lord, ask the Lord, what are my priorities for the day? Each and every day we wake up, we should tell the Lord, it's me, Lord, reporting in for duty. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? I want to do your will and not my will. 
And so the only way to get past deception, lostness, and selfishness is to regroup sex. Because again, when a computer is shut down, everything falls back into place. So that when it restarts, components have been stirred and shaken back into their proper place and working order. And then there are two things in our text that happen that put God's people back on the right path. Amen? Amen. When we look at verses 13 and 14, we find that after God had confronted them, they became stirred. Stirred and begun when the Lord's messenger proclaimed the Lord's message by the power of the Holy Spirit. God used the prophet Haggai to open their eyes and to help clear their minds. And as a result, they became obedient. So when their eyes were open, to the downward cycle of their lives. They repented and they began to obey. Saints, obedience to the Lord brings a return of God's favor. Obedience leads to revival. The Lord stirred up their spirits and be opened their eyes. The spirit stirred and took the blindness off, the blindness rather, off of their deception. And we see this today in our homes, in our churches, on our jobs, everywhere. The Lord challenged the people to pay off. Pay, I mean, he challenged the people to pay careful attention to what he was saying. And I need to challenge you today, again, to evaluate your ways. Don't look at anybody else it's not, and say what they're not doing. God said, evaluate your ways to see what you are not doing. And he told you to do. Don't be that nobody. Don't be that anybody. Don't be that somebody. But be that body that God has called you to be. Amen. Amen. God wants you to get stirred up and fired up. My prayer for all of you, after hearing God's word, week after week, that you become stirred up, that you become fired up, and become obedient to the ministry that God has called you to do. That you become stirred up, fired up, take your relationship with the Lord seriously. Become a doer of God's word, and not just a hearer only. That you become stirred up and fired up to get your house in order. Amen. 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 Because if your house is not in order, then you are not in order. Amen. And when you come to God's house, you still are in order. Amen. Amen. So get your house in order. Become stirred up, fired up, and reboot and reset your priorities to align with God's priorities. And the second thing that these people did once they were confronted by the prophet, they experienced a reboot. Hmm. They experienced a three-month turnaround. The reboot caused them to have a healthy fear of the Lord. And after they went to work to fulfill God's call to his house, they discovered his blessings again. You see, the stirring of the Spirit opened their eyes to realize that they need to work for God, not just for themselves. Because when they focus on themselves, they never had enough. They, the, the person seemed to have holes in the bottoms. But the stirring of the Spirit well, helped them to reprioritize their lives. Uh -huh. They put things in proper order. They put God first. They put the relationship with God first. The nation did not neglect God's house. They really put God back to where he belonged. And then they realized after God, there's family, there's ministry, and then there's work. Amen? Amen. So God says, what priority do you have out of alignment? Amen? Is he first, or are you putting your job first? Is he first, or are you putting your family first? Is he first, or are you putting your work and everything else first? God said, I need to be first, have first place in your life. So I'll get ready to conclude. God is telling us 
that we need a reboot. We need to reset our priorities. He's telling us that our marriages, our family, our career, our church ministry is not working properly. But we've got to hit that reset button, a re re reboot button ourselves, saying, no matter how much I want things for you, no matter how much I want things for myself, no matter how much I want it for my children, my community, no matter how much I want some things, it's up to me to hit the reset and reboot button. I can't do it for you. I can only do it for myself. So I pray that you hit that reset, reboot button in your life and say, no, God, I want to change. I want to stop doing the things I'm doing right now because they are not working for me. I want to put you first. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God is calling somebody up right now. Amen. <laughs> but it might be a wake up call. Amen. Because God works in mysterious ways. Amen. 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 I'm not oh, blaming the devil. Amen. Amen. Because God has a way to get our attention. Amen. Sometimes He's still a child to mm -hmm. us to get our attention. Mm -hmm. Sometimes He's still our enemies to get our attention. Amen. Amen. So that's why he said, don't check. Don't worry about who told you. Mm. It could be your friendly enemy. Listen to the message that they are bringing to you. Amen. They're just a messenger right. with his message. Amen. Amen. So, will you honor the word of God today by hearing this message and by being obedient to reboot and reset? Will you recognize that God has been trying to get your attention and it's time for you to make some adjustments. Will you ask God to have mercy on you and to repent? Will you repent for refusing to use your talents for the Lord? Will you turn back to Him and let Him use you? Not just in the world, amen. Some of you are doing great things on your job and community, but you're doing nothing in the house of the Lord, amen? Amen. amen. It's time to reboot. Amen. No more excuses. Amen. It's time to put first thing first in your life. It's time. To put God first. Amen. It's time to put God back on the throne. Because some of you are taking him off the throne. Mm. He said, put me back on the throne. Well. Take yourself off it. Amen. Amen. And let me be God. Amen. Amen. So when you get back, get back to work for God, again, God says, you will see a change. And everything will work out for your good. Because our number one priority is following Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Taking up our cross daily. Not even once in a while. But taking up our cross daily. Yeah. And following Him. Amen. Amen. Following Amen. Him. Not following your own plans. Not following your, your goals and your, uh, your agenda. But following after God. Again, go where He leads you to go. Yes. Do what He tells you to do. Live a life pleasing to him. And remember these words spoken by Augustine of Hippo. He said, Christ is not valued at all unless he's valued above all. Mm -hmm. Amen, saints. Amen. I pray again mm. that something that was said today that will cause us to re-examine our lives. Mm -hmm. And he's telling us that we need a reboot, a reboot. in order to reset our priorities. Amen. We'll put some things ahead of him and expect him to continue to bless us. But he says, get it back in order. Mm -hmm. Let him order your steps mm -hmm. and direct your path. Do his will. Because if, if, if you put him first, then some things will come back into your life. You will find sometimes your peace will come back. Your joy will come back. Your money will come back. Your money that wants money. Yeah. <laughs> he said, put him first. But the scripture says in Malachi, he said, try him. He said, bring your tithes and your offerings into his house. Yeah. He said, try him. Right. And he was over the ones of heaven, pour you out a blessing. Amen. You were trying yourself to pay all your bills. Put God on the background. He said again, reboot and reset your priorities. He said, do what I tell you first. Prove him. Trust him. Trust him. Mm -hmm. Trust 
him. Amen. Amen. Do it God's way. Well. Not our way. God bless you. Amen. Amen.
to worship, that we have the right to call his name. We have the right to use his name, to use his word, to use yes. the blood of Jesus. So he did all of that for you and for me. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And I'm so glad. So glad. I'm so glad. So glad. He did it so for me. Amen. 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 And I was not fit to live, <laughs> but not yet ready to die. Amen. But Jesus came mm. that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And so the Lord suffered as we were remembering Jesus Christ. So we just want to bless God this morning and remember of him. And he did it on the, on, the, on the final night in the upper room with the disciples. He passed around the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. Yes. As often as you eat it. That means you don't have to wait till first Sunday. You can Amen. do it at home if you choose to. He said, as often as you eat it, you do it and remember to him. You don't eat it just if you're hungry now. But some people do it unworthy. You eat it in remembrance of him. Amen. And then he passed around the juice, the fruit of the vine. And he said, this fruit of the vine represents my shed blood. And he says, all as you drink it, don't drink it just because you're thirsty, amen. Mm -hmm. Don't drink it just because you like the taste of juice. But you drink it in honor of him. Amen. amen. And so that's what we're going to do this morning. Mm -hmm. We're going to eat, break the bread, and we're going to drink the juice in honor of him. And communion is for baptized believers in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We recognize sometimes you might not get the opportunity to get baptized. But the first step is to give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. And then get baptized. Don't get it, don't put the, 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 the bucket before the horse now. Amen. Amen. And so we do it this morning in remembrance of Jesus Christ. And so we're gonna I'm gonna ask Stephen Ford to, to pray over the uh, the juice and pray over the bread. And while he is praying, we want you to search your heart. Amen. If you have any unconfessed sins, you don't have to not take communion. Because you can, you can confess your sins right then and stuff, you know. Some things you might have to get fully in order afterwards. But you can ask God for forgiveness right then. So you don't have to stop taking communion, amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because you know everything in your life is not hunky dory that some things you've done. But you can just pray to God and actually help you. To get it right, get it right, and to be right. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to ask Stephen Ford to come forward. And, uh, uh, has everyone, have everyone been served the communion? And they came in or at some point. Do you have the communion elements? Amen. So I'm, I'm going to ask him to uh, pray. And as he's praying, for those who can, stand and we'll go right into the serving of the elements. This one is the word of prayer. Lord God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. The sweet, sweet name of Jesus. The one who died and rose again. For the sins of the world, our sins, yours and mine. Father God, we thank you once again for allowing us an opportunity to come together, Lord God, to celebrate you, to honor you, the price that you paid, your body, your blood, all that you've done. You didn't have to do it for God, Jesus, but you did. You paid a price you didn't have to pay. He came down from the throne of glory to share in a life so that you would know what it's like to be here on earth. You gave your life 33 and some years. Lord God, to be a perfect example without sin so that we may live. He prepared a place for us. And we're grateful. And we're thankful. The bread that we take today, Lord, will represent your body. And as we take it, we ask that we take it with a pure heart, a clean heart, that we will not have any faults against our brothers or our sisters. 
that he would lay it all on the cross, lay it all at the foot of the altar. And the blood, your blood that represents sacrifice, our salvation, it represents healing, it represents redemption. The blood you shed is like no other. There's power. Wonder working power yes, yes. in your blood. In the blood. Yes. So Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we can never thank you enough for all that you have done. Yes. And as the pastor said, we don't have to do this just once a month. We can do it every day. Because yes. you are a part of our daily lives. Yes. We thank you, Lord God. We give you all glory. Yes. We give you all honor. We give you all praise for taking that walk up on Calvary. And even when you did that, you didn't do it by yourself. There was someone there to help you carry that cross. Because they knew the price that you were paying. We could never thank you enough. We love you. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift up your name. In Jesus, my master's name we pray. Amen. 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 This bread, again, represents Christ's body. It's symbolic of his body. And so we're praying that we don't look so much into the natural bread, but we look toward the body of Jesus Christ that was hung on the cross for us. So let us eat this bread in remembrance of his broken body. This cup of juice, though it might be small, mm -hmm. we have a small amount in it, but it is symbolic and very great. Yeah. This cup of juice represents Christ's shed blood. Yeah. And the scripture declared that without Christ's shedding of his blood mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. us, yeah. we would not have been forgiven of our sins. In the Old Testament, the sins were covered up. They weren't forgiven. But when Jesus shed his blood, our sins were forgiven once and for all. And from that point on, he said, all we have to now because he shed his blood. That when we do continue to sin, that we ask for forgiveness and repent. And then he will forgive us cleansed us from all unrighteousness. So this blood here, this juice here, has cleansing power, yes. healing power, yes. delivering power. Yes. Let us drink together. Amen. 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 Amen.
for our community. I'm not just here to serve where the spirit is. I tell the community at large and everything. And so, so I said, you know, I'm grinding that much and stuff, but I, I said I get to keep the one I have at home in my vehicle. Because you never know when you're going to encounter someone. But there's a lot of dangerous drugs out there, man. Right. You don't know what you're getting in there when Amen. you go and even purchase these things and stuff. So that's, I just wanted to say that and I kept forgetting to mention that. That I am who I, I have been certified to minister Lord Now, every Sunday morning at 10 is our, our Sunday worship service. We're in person and we're on Facebook Live. Our Bible studies is virtual only on Facebook and Zoom on Wednesday night at 7 30 p.m. We're still studying about forgiveness and unforgiveness. And so, our next leadership training for our leaders is, is coming Friday night at 7 30 p.m. Uh, next month, March, March 17, 17, the Easter come early this, this year. Easter's in March. It's the Ash Wednesday, I believe, February 14th. Yeah. But anyway, March the 17th, yeah, I've been invited to be the guest preacher for Fort Foot's uh, Women's Day. It's, it's at 11 o'clock, so that Sunday, March the 17th, we will not be gathering here, but I'm asking everyone who can to join me at Fort Foot. Baptist Church, which is in Fort Washington, Maryland, amen, at 11 o'clock on March 17th. I'll provide you more information. Don't forget your offerings. You know, I'm reaching every Sunday, but don't forget your offerings and your tithes. And everything. That's how we can pay our bills. <coughs> That's what we're doing just on love and stuff, you know. It operates mm -hmm. on money. Because I'm here for that. not going to step. I love you and I love my house. And, uh, I love mm -hmm. my church. So we need your, your tithes and your offering. So we encourage you to don't, don't forsake your giving. Amen. Just like the, the message today and everything, how God has told us and blessed the people with not giving to Him. Just put their own needs first. Everything. So uh, those are the uh, way of announcements for the birthdays. Uh, we'll have an anniversary now. But Jim uh, Bell, we get a birthday on the anniversary Yeah. Sister Boyd has a birthday this week, February the 6th. Will. Sister Boyd has a birthday, February the 8th. My, my. And Deacon, Deacon uh, Helena has a birthday, February the 14th. Watch out now. Amen. Uh, so that's our birthday for the month of February. I missed in the Bible, so that's my name. If somebody had a birthday, that was our way of doing so. Now it's time to pray. It is time to pray. Okay, it's time to pray. Um, this is wrong for girls because she's in so much pain. You know how she wants to be here. But she's in so much pain. She went to that conversation room again last night mm -hmm. and whatever. And so uh, yeah. she's in a lot of pain. We want to go home. She's still in a lot of pain. She's had a procedure on Tuesday to, uh, for, and she failed a week or so we want to continue to keep her in prayer, continue to keep her in swan mm -hmm. um, and um, crystal. They really want, they all had uh, strokes. Because she lift them up in prayer. So there's so much to pray for. People are still grieving, people are still sick. There's not still a lot of COVID going on, food going on, and all kinds of things. So we'll just pray one for another. A lot of people still have cancer, they're doing good. Mm -hmm. So a lot of health challenges. So the care she takes to take care of people. She can help out with eyes and stuff, and the kid there. Uh, all kinds of things. So we want to keep our people, the young people, too, lifted up, keep the military lifted up, our students lifted up, the health care workers lifted up. So in other words, we just pray for everybody. Pray for relationships. So I'll get all that, so uh, I'm going to ask her. Uh, because we have a mission that she comes for. You know, and do our, uh, do our prayer time. Amen. 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 So we know who we're traveling, thank God. This is down and down, we're not coming out in the world back. Amen. Amen. Thanks, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come again just thanking you for allowing us, first of all, just to gather here one more time. Just to praise your holy name. Just to celebrate you, Heavenly Father. For you are a good God. 
A mighty good God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word, Heavenly Father. Thank you, God. That is the message that you sent to us this morning. That sometimes we might need just a, a, a reboot. We need a restart. We need to reset our priorities. We need to make you our number one priority. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make you our number one priority. The number one in our lives, Heavenly Father. Lord, as we close this morning and come to the close of this service, Heavenly Father, we have celebrated the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. Father, we thank God again for what you have done for us. How you suffered, how you died, bled. But yet, you rose again on the third day, Father. With all power, Lord, we thank you for that. And for that, Heavenly Father, we can sit with you. Hallelujah. We can be with you when we're no longer, when our life is over. We can live, go to live with you. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for Again, for just for what you've done for us, Lord, we ask you, Lord, just to bless us this morning. Lord, we ask you to remember those who are in need of a healing, Heavenly Father. Lord, we know that you are able, Heavenly Father, able to heal, able to save, able to do whatever our needs are, Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, we just thank you. So many of us are in needs of different things. Finances, Heavenly Father. Some of you need a financial blessing, Lord. But, Lord, we know that you are able, Heavenly Father, to supply our needs, Heavenly Father. You are able, if we just trust and obey you, just trust you, lean on you, Heavenly Father, for our needs. Lean on you for our blessings. Lean on you for our health needs, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we need to do what we need to do. We need to take care of ourselves, and but yet put you a priority. Make you our priority, Lord. As our preacher said this morning. Lord, we ask you just to continue to bless our church. Bless the saints that are gathered here, Heavenly Father. Bless our families, Heavenly Father. Bless the ones, Heavenly Father, who are bereaved this morning. Some have lost friends and family members, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, we ask you just to remember them, Heavenly Father. Let them know that you have sent a comfort for them. Hallelujah. Jesus, Lord, we just thank you again for your many blessings. Lord, we ask you just to remember the people that in our lives who provide services, Heavenly Father. Remember our service members, Heavenly Father, who have gone away and some still in the states here, Heavenly Father, and those who are in foreign countries who are there to protect They've, given, they've set their lives aside to just to protect us, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, we ask you just to remember and protect them. We know that there were three members that just recently yeah. that lost their lives oh, in a foreign country just to, for our protection. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we ask you just to remember their families, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Yeah. Their families are grieving this morning. Mm -hmm. And saying why. But Lord, we ask you just to remember them and mm -hmm. send them a comfort, Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, that comfort, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask you just to remember all our the local people, our the, the, the firefighters, our doctors, Heavenly Father, who uh, you've you know you've given this gift to 
to, to help us, Heavenly Father. For we know that you are the divine healer. That's right, that's you are the divine healer. Yeah. So when, yeah. when, when the doctor said they don't know what to do next, we still can depend on you. Yeah. We still can. So give us that faith, Heavenly Father. Help our unbelief. If we have any of us have yeah. unbelief, just help our unbelief. Yeah. Help us, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bless our families. Make us strong. Make, make us all a closer. Our families be a close knit family. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to, as we've been having a lesson now, to forgive. Ask us to help us to learn how to forgive one another. How to forgive, even though there may be things with. We may never forget. We may never forget. But we can forgive. We can forgive. Give us that loving heart, that loving spirit. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. As we leave here today, Lord, we ask you just to help us to continue to lift you up. Not just lift you up while we are here. We ask you just to continue to to praise and glorify you, yeah. to pray, and to make you our, 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 our number one priority. Our number one priority. Just to continue to pray and give you the praise. Lord, we thank you. We glorify your name. We lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray these prayers. Amen. 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 Church say amen. Amen. Let us stand for the benediction. It says, but be not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but be ye transformed yes. by the renewing of your mind, yes. that you may prove that what is good, that what is acceptable, and that which is perfect, and that which is the will of God. Yes. Amen. 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 amen.